So guys, let me tell you the sorry tale of this car. Some months ago, it uh, it sprung a leak. All of the it won't start now. There we go. I heard the pop and all of the fluids came out. Like all of it. So I had a look for where the leak was coming from and it appeared to be everywhere. It was all over the engine. It was uh, coming from uh, the, the housing for the thermostat. It was coming from the plastic housing. Or, oh, I don't, I don't remember what it was from. Anyway, it was all leaking, so I took it to the garage. They fixed it all up. They charged me a pretty penny to do so. And uh, when I went there to pick it up, the guy said, I've got some really bad news for you. He said, you're going to have to spend another 700 euro because your timing belt's contaminated. Um, because of some of the issues regarding the coolant and blah 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 so I bit the bullet and when I got paid next I took it back to the garage they replaced the timing belt uh, they replaced the water pump they did all kinds of things so I gave them the money and I drove, uh, drove away and at first, for the first few kilometres, literally about five kilometres, it drove fine. And then all of a sudden, it started consuming about 13 litres per 100 kilometres. Really, really high fuel consumption. And uh, I noticed that there was no vacuum assist on the brakes. Sometimes I didn't have any brakes at all. Sometimes the car would just stop in the middle of the road. I couldn't go back, I couldn't go forward. The engine was revving, but there was no power to the powertrain. There was no power to the wheels. So I limped back to the garage with it, and the guy, he ran a scan on it with his scan tool. He said, there's, there's no codes, there's no fault codes stored in the ECU so there's nothing wrong with it and then eventually he did find a fault but it was related to an indication on the uh, instrument cluster which was just a, it was logged as a fault because it was basically a symptom of what the engine was doing when it was stalling so anyway, the guy very helpfully gave me the number of Ford and Nicosia and sent me on my merry way with a broken car and 1,500 euros lighter. So I knew fine well it was something that they had done and uh, I started to investigate the problem myself. I couldn't afford to spend any more money on it. I couldn't afford to buy a new car, or a, a different car, because I'll never be able to afford to buy a new car. Um, so it sounded like a vacuum leak, the engine was hunting, uh, there was trouble starting, and when it did start, the, uh, as I say, the engine would hunt, it would go right down to low revs, and up to high revs, it just pointed to a vacuum leak. So I started to hunt for a vacuum leak, I couldn't find one. And then I looked up on YouTube the similar symptoms, and someone suggested that it could be um, the emissions, uh, the purge valve for the uh, evaporative emission system that was either stuck open, stuck closed, 
are not operating properly. So I investigated that and I, I couldn't really come to any conclusion there because every time you tried to pull the, the connector off to see if there was any voltage there, it would throw a code and it would disable the system. So it was no good and it was impossible to probe the wires from behind because they were sealed. Look at this joker. They just just don't care. They drive like absolute imbeciles. Tell you what mate, I'll wait eh? You fool. Anyway, you wait there. I need to go to the bank. I'll be two minutes. Talk amongst yourself and no fighting. So I'm back. This part here is going to be the proof of the pudding because the car always stalled at the top of this hill. Always by the roundabout. It's driving differently today but I'll go on to explain what I did in a moment, but just let me try this part here always stalled here, wouldn't pull away uh, it's okay, it's doing what it should do this time so I do believe it's fixed so I ordered a part from AliExpress, Ali Depressed waited weeks for it to come I, I knew that it wasn't the correct part, I couldn't find the correct part for Ford Fusion 2009 anywhere, believe it or not, anywhere. So I ordered the closest thing that I was going to be able to modify. It was keyed slightly differently, but all I had to do was file off the key from the, from the solenoid. So I put that on, and it was the same thing, it was not functioning. So it wasn't getting a signal from the ECU to, to evacuate the, uh, the, the line, the evaporative emissions. So again, using uh, YouTube, I decided that I'd reset all of the parameters stored in the powertrain control module and to do that you disconnect the negative leads the leads from the negative connector of the battery and you short the positive connector to the leads that you've just disconnected from the battery and you keep it like that for a minute to discharge all the capacitors in all the power control modules the ECU, the powertrain control module and I got in the car, it's like a different car uh, the fuel
fuel consumption that I'm reading now has gone back to 6.3, which is normal. 6.3 litres per 100 kilometres. That's with the air conditioning uh, compressor running. It's about 5.6 if you're not running the air conditioner. Um, so it was using far too much fuel. And it looks as though it's fixed, guys. It looks as though that's all it was. It needed to have the ECUs reset. So the upshot is that the guys in the garages that you spend all this money with, they're basically code monkeys. And if their scan tool doesn't tell them what the problem is, they don't have the wherewithal to look further and find out what the problem is themselves. It's an absolute disgrace, actually, they call themselves mechanics. Sure, they can do all the things, all the mechanical things, like they did a good job in, in solving the problem with the water leaks I had, but that's just mechanical grease monkey stuff. When it comes to trying to fix something in the engine, you might as well use YouTube rather than spend all your money uh, using these guys. Alright guys, I need to go to the shop to get some Mr. Marengo food. That's the moan over for today, but at least the car's running. <laughs>